Hello, um, it's Sham again, and this is Machine Learning Made Easy with Mathematica 11, Part 2, where um, I'm going to cover um, some features of ma Mathematica Machine Learning, including the, the, the functions predict, let's put the human, predict, predict. Um, I'm also going to cover, what else I'm going to cover? I'm going to cover cluster classify, cluster classify, uh, oh -ho. There we go. And we'll see, I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll see if we have time for some feature extraction. But for now, it's going to be these two functions. So let's start with, if you haven't seen last video, um, the last video yet, Machine Learning with Easy with Mathematica 11 Part 1, uh, you can check that out in the links below. Um, that, that, that video covers find distribution, find formula, and classify. And cl classify is by far my favorite machine learning tool um, with Mathematica 11. So check that video out if you haven't, and let's, let's, get, let's get on with it. Okay, so first things first, predict. How does predict work? It's very similar to classify. So again, if you haven't watched the video, go back. How many times do we have to remind you? Go back and watch the video. But it's very similar to classify in that it uses this um, arrow, right? Just this arrow thing we have here. Um, if, you, if, you're unfam un if you're unfamiliar with that, it's just dash hyphen followed by um, oh, I always forget that's a less than sign um, yes but yes that that's how you draw an arrow in Mathematica so this is this basically it takes in a da data set as you can see here it takes in a data set um, with yeah just basic, basic it's a basic da data set one goes to one one point five two to two point four three to three point four four to four point five so um, here it used a linear regression, obviously four different examples, one, two, three, four, and it's numerical data. And it can um, analyze a lot of different data, such as vector data, um, I've, I've used it for a, lo a lot of data, and we'll see some examples um, ahead. So yeah, so we run that, and to call this, pre so predict creates a predictive function, which we can then call by um, using this assigned variable here. And let's say p on hmm, two point no it's three it's three how about that? And it gives us this number. So this number is what it thinks, right? What it thinks three should be classified as, and three should be classified as three point four. I'm not sure why it's not, but let's, let's take a number between two and three. So two point five. That's not right. Two point five, and it gives us number two point nine five, which is about about between um, 2.4 and 3.4 so it's working pretty well um, so then then we can see some there's, there's a lot of different um, attributes to the prediction function that you can call so say we have p of 2.5 and then we can call a bunch of different stuff such as hmm, let's check the whenever in doubt check the documentation let me pull that up here Details and options is where you can find what um, options the function we call. Uh -huh. Let's go here, function, and details and options. Yeah, so we can see the decision, the distribution, and the properties. So let's 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 just look at properties if you want. You can call all of them, but let's look at the distribution real fast. Copy and paste that in. There we go. And it gives us a normal distribution of um, how close it, it it thinks, like the ever bars are on a graph almost, right? So how close, how precise it is. Um, so that's predict. So now, now let's now let's um, use it on a bigger scale, right? So here we have this giant data set. It's the bikes and. What what it what it what it has is um, dates these dates in t 2011, weather temperature, more and, and a lot more like humidity wind speed, and count of bikes right bikes count, and um, let's look at the length. This thing is I believe um, this, this is over 700 long, but to be precise, to be precise, 731 long, and so. Um, one of the things you want to use in machine learning, a good um, tip of the thumb or whatever, uh, it's you want to use 80% of the 
test set uh, of the of total data set as your training set, right? So you can use the other 20% as test set. So here we have 584. Let's round it down to 500. Um, rounding is no problem. So we have training sets and test sets. Let me put that in. Um, we create the training set again. This this is like I said in the previous video. Um, uh, uh, the first flashcard that you show to a kid. So you show the kid this flashcard with all this on it, right? And and it predicts the count. And this flashcard with all this on it and predicts the count, right? So, and you give it the count. You give it the count. You give it the count. You give it the count until you get the five the five first. Which you ask the kid, given this, what is the count? So um, that's the difference between the training and test set here. We'll run that up. Then we have the training set, which is the first 500 here, and the test set, which is the last 231. Now let's let's let's. What you can do a nifty function of predict is here too. Uh, you can training. You can set the training so it goes to. Um, especially with data sets, if you don't know a semantic import, it imports any data as a data set, which is really nice to uh, play around with that um, You can call it by the row number, so um, it takes all this and given this data, it outputs this. We're going we're to use the random forest method here, and you can set the performance goal to quality. If you want, you can set it to speed. Uh, I'm going to go quality for now because this should not take too long. Let's run that. And it's looking like it is going to take so. No, it's not. So um, six features. So one, two, three, four, five, six features to test, and it's 500 training examples, like we saw before up here. Let's call this thing, but not just one. Let's create what's called a predictor measurement. With predictor measurement, we're doing the same thing as the test as the training set, but instead we're going to um, apply this p. To the test set, right? So, do that, and well, the first thing it outputs is the standard deviation, right? The standard deviation is pretty high. Oh my, um, 1.5 times 10 to the third, which is one, two, three. That's 15,000. Um, which is pretty bad. Okay, um, most of the time, most of the time, um, this this gets goes better, but I'm not sure why this is bad. Um, we can look at a comparison plot of this. This is this is very interesting. See how it did. and See why it did, did so bad. Yeah. So if you want you want you want this these blue dots to fall on a line here, right? On a parallel line. Uh, I I just have one offhand. I'm running on a different kernel in Mathematica. See if I can pull it up. Um, let's move that out of the way. Now I'll show you what a really good one is like. So right here, let me copy that in. So this is this is a, one of the predictions I'm working on right now. It's actually for um, some monkeys, right? And I'm trying to predict their path given a bunch of data. And this is what it gives out, right? So you can see there's not much variation, and um, they all fall on this predicted line, right? Perfect prediction line. And um, the way the way you can see these like these differences is by calling residuals, right? Residual plot. My bad. And we can call it here. For this one, residual, residual plot. Let me just put that in. Cool. And see, we can see the differences between the 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 points and the actual predicted actual the actual value between the predicted value and the actual value, which is obviously at zero. So actual value minus predicted value. And um, like like you saw with mine. With my example here, um, everything lines everything lines up on this perfect prediction line, and it's all good. So you can do a lot with this predict. Um, if you give it enough data, it can be pretty precise, as you see here. Um, this this takes in a bunch of data, six 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 variables, but as in here. But of course, this data only has seven of thirty one. This data has over eleven thousand. So m the more data, the better predict works. The better with classify too. Better with any um, function you call with Mathematica machine learning. Um, so next is cluster classify. Let's go through this really fast before we end this video. Um, so cluster classify. Let me cluster classify. It basically cla it basically finds cl clusters, which is also a function. I'm not going to go over that here because. 
um, it's it's a pretty basic lowdown function. Find clusters. Just get that in. There we go. And let's do question mark. And yeah, so it's it um, basically it's. I'll let you guys look into it. Uh, I'm not gonna go into it for night right now. But cluster classify basically does the same thing as find clusters if you are familiar with it. Um, let's just get some random data here, right? Some random data. If you want, ever want to create random data, best things to use is random real. Um, let's just visualize this data, okay? It's basically, random data that I created between negative one and one right over here, and between two and four over over here. Um, and so, yeah. So what we want to do is given like a bunch of data, right? So this is a simple case. But given a bunch of data, the computer should be able to classify these dots as one group and these dots as another group because it's not obviously different. So with that, the easiest way to do that is cl cluster classify. So let's run that. And cl cluster classify, I don't know if you noticed before, but um, it gives out a method, right? So here we assign the method to random forest, but if you don't assign any method, it creates its own method, right? No, it uses an in sort method, in this case, linear regression. Um, cl cluster classify has different met methods than predict and classify, but and here it uses a Gaussian mixture, but you can look through the, the documentation and you can find a lot of different methods to use. Uh, what's next? So, next we can see how we classify it, and it's, it's really simple, honestly. Um, how we classify it, and this is not working. Um, let's let's look at this here. There we go. So, um, this is me running cluster again to call any of these machine learning functions. See, this create a classifier function just like classify to call it. Just put it around the data, and just put it around data, and it clusters it right. So, it's either in group one or in group two. One, two, one, two, and um, let's just look at that data. And again, it clustered it into blue and orange. One and two. And it's really that that simple. Um, cluster classify works a lot better. Um, well, it works. It works, but it works for two um, D points, three D points. Find clusters also works for three D points. As you can see here, I have an example. A, a, um, again, with with my monkeys, um, <laughs> my my monkeys. So you you can see this. Um, this I this is find cluster, but this is me uh, using find cluster to. Um, these are a bunch of 2D points, right? And I'm um, 3D points, my, my bad. And I just use fine cluster to cluster them into groups. And then you can also use use fine cluster to cluster them into heights, as you can see here. Let me paste that in. Um, yeah, so you can see here the, 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 the points are clustered into heights red, blue, orange, yellow, orange, green, and purple, black. I'm forgetting the colors. So um, fine clusters, cl cluster classify. Really do the same thing. Cluster classify, I think, is better for 2D data. Fine clusters can work really well on 3D data as well, as you can see here. Um, and predict, right? Predict can be used majorly on numerical data, but um, all other data can be used. Other data, as we see here, date data. Um, but yeah, so predict numerical data. If you haven't watched the first video, classify with any other data. Really easy, really fun to use. Uh, and again, just play around with this. Um, play, play, play around with this. Predict. Just use. Just find some random data online, and see if you can predict something. Right? Because it's really cool to see your your computer do something that you can't even do. Since there's like 731 different cases. But yeah. So um, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and go to part three for the next video, or part one if you haven't watched it. Part three too. Okay.